Okay, uh, I just thought I'd jump in and uh, do a little something that might help you, might not. So I want to do a kind of a traditional paint scheme on this airplane. And that's one of the ones, I, I think they call it the Signature Plus. I don't, I don't know, I've never done one before. I've always done some pretty much one-off stuff, but this is basically it. I think this was a tack aeroplane that I robbed the picture from, but this is basically the, the, the paint scheme. And so I'm doing it just like this. But if you'll notice, the uh, this is actually a smoke color. It's uh, a real popular Cub Crafters uh, color. This is in the uh, FDGH uh, PPG paint line now, but you can see that the um, gray, this smoke, this dark gray goes up and joins the red. And then this is actually black here, you see. So that's a black stripe. Then that's a red stripe. So it's actually a vinyl stripe that's painted with the same, this is firecracker red. So it's painted, you actually take a piece of it and you paint it firecracker red. Uh, again, cup crackers will provide all this, all the decals and stuff for standard paint schemes. If you get carbon fiber, they charge uh, quite, a, quite a bit more. In fact, I wouldn't do it. Uh, I got a local guy that'll do, do a little carbon fiber. Like I like this out of carbon fiber. I'd like to have this logo out of carbon fiber, the numbers out of carbon fiber, and the checkered flag out of carbon fiber. But uh, I would not do this stripe, I don't think, in carbon fiber. I think I would leave that looking like a paint stripe. It'll be black vinyl. But in any case, the way you kind of set this up is that in the drop box, there's actually this little document right here. And it's kind of showing the paint scheme. This is a different one that they're showing the paint. The top color paint goes up and goes up, which a lot of people do that. They use let the bottom color come up and go across. But in this case, I'm going to do like this. I'm going to leave the red stay up across the top, pretty much bring this paint line down uh, horizontal with the elevator and horizontal stabilizer. So if you go to Dropbox, you'll see here, they're showing kind of the layout of the stripe. That's the black stripe that's gonna be in the front. It's gonna be about eight inches up from the bottom of where the boot cow will go. Uh, coming off of the window right here, it's gonna be, the color change is gonna be about a half inch. I know that's hard to see, but the color change is gonna be about a half inch off of the corner of that window down. The color will change from red to smoke. And then what this 75, uh, you know, three quarters of an inch is, is that's the, then from the, from the paint change down to the black stripe. So the black stripe is gonna pretty much, you can see it's symmetrical. So we're gonna let it uh, symmetrically done. So we're gonna let it be three quarters of an inch of gray showing above the black stripe. But then the back, it shows you come over about 35 and a half inches to the tail end of it. Both of these stripes, if you get them from cup crashers, they're identical. Uh, they're, in other words, they're symmetrical. In the middle, from here, to there, to there, to there, it's exactly the same stripe. So you can put it either way. Obviously it's gonna arch like this, so you get two stripes. So for us to get our correct color change, for me to paint the first color, which will be the red, then I need to, to have the stripe first, and I'm gonna follow that stripe uh, to give me my three quarters inch above it color change. So what I did is I took the stripe, here's the way the stripes, these are the stripes, the vinyl stripes, which is, I leave the backy paper on, this is not stuck down. You can see I just took some uh, masking tape and I went ahead and I got my, found my eight inches up here, which will be the top of the black or the bottom of the black, I forget which one, but anyway, it's about eight inches right here. Yeah, it was to the top of the black is eight inches. That's where my tape is. I put the, use the edge of the tape to mark it. So this was the top of the tape. I came over here, I marked this little piece of tape right here, gave me a half of an inch off of here, which remember we're gonna have our color change a half of an inch off of that window, well, actually from here, down from there, down to here, cause this will be the edge of the paint. So, or actually from here, yeah. So you got a half of an inch right here, and then we got three quarters of an inch from here to the top of the paint line. So anyway, so I find that point since I've got it, then I know it's coming up. You can see by the pictures coming up almost to the color change, but not quite uh, right here. And then 35 and a half inches from here across to here, the red stripe is gonna come up into here and follow it. So in any case, so the first thing I did is I went ahead and got some scissors and I trimmed back. You can see how close I trimmed to the top, what will be the top of that uh, paint line. So we're here, we had excess paper coming out. I don't want it in the way of my tape lines and what I'm working on. So I just go ahead and trim this top all the way back. It won't matter. This is the exact same way 
We'll install the stripe later. I'll come back over and set it back up after I painted the color change and I'll come kind of to the middle and I'll put it right where I want it. And then, and then of course I'll lay it all out straight to start with this with tape like this. Then I'll come in the middle and I'll cut, I'll leave this side taped up for example, and I'll come in here and I'll go to the back side. I'll, I'll bring this, I'll take that tape loose and just let it hang back. And then I'll come behind it and I'll take that and start peeling, I'll cut it right, cut just the backing paper behind it, just start getting it loose, pull it back and then cut it with some scissors. And then what I'll do is I'll pull a little bit of the backing back and just lay, you see it's laying flush. When you set this up, just make sure you push it from one tape point to the other so that the angles make it lay flat. So you know when you install it, it's gonna do the same thing. When you put it back up there, it's gonna to wanna to stay flat and go right to where it's at. So basically I'll start from the middle, peel the backing paper off, go a little ways up here and then work it with a squeegee from this side and down to there. I don't wet it soapy or anything. Some people do. If, you, if you're worried about it, you can get some uh, spray and put a little soap, dishwashing soap and some water in it and just spray behind it and put that actually down on the soapy water. If you do that, you can actually slide it around. It won't stick. Now that'll evaporate later and will stick just fine. So that's the way some of the almost professionals do. If you're really professional, you don't do that. You just go ahead and stick it down. Because when you peel the packing paper back, then hold the stripe back here away from it and start from this end with your squeegee and then just start squeezing it down so you're keeping the air bubbles and keeping it real flat all the way down to where you pulled the backing paper back, then peel you some more backing paper back and just lay some more down. Start halfway, go that way, start halfway, and go that way. But to get back to setting this up, so then, so we know that now it gives us our stripe, so we know where the stripe's gonna be. And again, we want the paint change, color change to be three quarters of an inch above that, right? So what I do then is I've gone back and I've taken just little pieces of masking tape here, see? So I've got the edge of the masking tape is straight. And I just go along and take my ruler, not that big a deal, just take my ruler and I just put it on the edge like that, the edge of the, like that right there. There, if I can look through the camera and do that. So you can see there I got about three quarters of an inch from there to the top of the tape. From here to the top of this tape, it's gonna be three quarters of an inch. So you're gonna put your tape, obviously, on the painted side. So this is, in other words, these tapes, your marker tapes are gonna be on your painted side because you're gonna run, run this tape on this back side. And then, then that's gonna let us paint red all the way down to the top of this, okay? So measure them here, up three quarters of an inch, put your masking tape to mark it on that side. And then I just do that. You can see every, every so often all the way down. Then just take your tape. In this case, it's a easy stripe with not a lot of bends in it. So I'm using a half inch blue tape. If you gotta make more curves and you can use a quarter inch and if you've got even more curves, you can use an eighth of an inch where it, this tape is stretchy and bends good. And uh, so anyway, so just, uh, I'll start at this end, obviously. And uh, later we're going to have to put the boot cowl on here. See, I'll just, I'll actually just cut this uh, after I get the, when I put the, get ready to put the boot cowl on before we put the stripe on, because you keep the stripe in one piece. I'll actually uh, cut this, you know, where it meets the boot cowl overlap, the fabric spacer here just a little bit. So we'll end up cutting this right at the end of the boot cowl. And then, I mean, at the edge of the fat here where the boot cowl overlaps and then applying and then putting this part on, pick it up from here down to there. But for now, we'll, we're, I'm getting ready to take this off because now I've got this laid out. Um, then the later we'll have to fit the boot cowl on here just, to, just enough to bring it up to where it should be. And so we can then put our stripe on there and then continue our color line so it matches and then pull it back off and paint it. So I'm gonna paint it all red to start with. And then obviously then it, this is be the smoke color down here. So I'll let it follow on down to the bottom of the boot cow. So that's what'll have to happen. So then I just peel back, you know, some of this, rotate it a little bit. So then I just peel back, you know, and I usually pull it back so far. Now, obviously this has got a slight, you know, arch to it as it goes up through there. So you don't, it's not a straight line, but we're just gonna do that. And we're gonna just, I, I hold, 
this edge of the blue tape up close to where this one will be, you know, and then kind of move it up and down because it's got a little bit of an arch. And then I use my left hand and just kind of press this tape down as we go along and just make sure I'm kind of hitting the edges of all my tape marks as I go along. Making sure I'm not doing any of this or any of this right where I'm putting the, the joint down to. So I've got a nice smooth transition. So when you're done, just stand back and look at it. You know, does it look nice and symmetrical? You haven't gone up and down and all that kind of stuff. And you really shouldn't if you're, you can put these tape marks even closer together if you want to, but I've done this quite a bit. So I, uh, I feel confident in what I can do. So you can see it looks nice and smooth. So the red is gonna come down to the top of the blue, I mean, top of the, uh, the blue tape right here. And uh, so now I'm gonna go back and pull all my little marks off. If it looks good, I'll pull all these little do jiggers off that I had to mark it. It's good masking tape. I'll take all those off, I'll go ahead and take the stripe, remove it, get it out of the way. Then I'll come back. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, with this paint scheme, a lot of paint schemes, if I've got a color change and I've, I've got an inexpensive paint, I'll go ahead and paint the top color or the light color, whichever is the lighter color. I'll paint it all the way down to the bot to the bottom and just kind of let it, and then at the bottom I'll paint it kind of lightly because it will leave a little bit of a, I guess, rough texture if you don't leave it smooth all the way. And that way my, when I go to, the, do, to do the bottom and wrap it around with the new color, it doesn't, uh, isn't quite as obvious. In this case, this red paint's $800 a gallon. So I'm not just gonna paint the whole <laughs> fuselage and then paint back over it with the smoke gray. I'm gonna go ahead and break the paint line right there. And what that means then is that after I, and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, I'm getting ready to spray it here just a little bit. But what I'm gonna do is, is something that I found. This paint, I'm gonna put a little bit slower uh, additive to it. So I'm not gonna use I'm gonna use a high solids hardener, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a, the medium dry, which is the F3405 is the medium. Okay, there's a fast, which you can use if you're doing small parts. That's the additive that you add to it, which will make it go a little faster. You can use reducer if you want, and you can get different speeds of reducer to make the paint flash off and harden up quicker. Uh, this is, especially like it's really cool weather, this is the winter. I do have it uh, a heated paint booth here, so I'll have it at about 70 degrees, which is the perfect temperature. But, and I don't have that much to paint, but it's a fairly large area. If you're doing a great big wing, you know, it's pretty slow by the time you start on one side of the wing, go all the way around, come back around on the other side and back up to the front to match it, it's already tacking up a little bit. It could be if you're using a fast, a fast. So I, I still like to use the medium and uh, uh, I've actually gotten where I don't use a reducer. They say you can reuse up to 10%, I believe it is, reducer that you can use optionally with this FDGH. Uh, that's this paint right here, Delphi. That's the code numbers for Firecracker Red. Firecracker Red, get out your checkbook. Uh, and then that's, we're using F3260. You got several different choices of this, but this is what Cub Crackers uses and what they recommend so we've been using that that's the hardener that mixes we mix it three to one three parts of the paint to one part of the hardener and then uh, the 10 percent uh or actually not 10 percent six ounces per mixed gallon of that to what you mix and i actually make a little chart up i did it for dx39 but it's actually the same you want the same so six ounces will go to 128 ounces in other words on a mixed gallon you'll have six ounces of that makes your 128 uh, uh, ounces. So if you're so if you're only going to mix up uh, 53, you know, then you then I've just got it broken down so I can quickly look at it. So two and a half ounces. But if I'm looking, a lot of times I'm doing small amounts. You know, I might do 32 ounces of paint, which would then take a, a one and a half ounces of the uh, additive accelerator on there. So in any case. What I was getting to with all that is that if you use a little slower paint, you know, I mean, the, the advantage of a fast drying paint faster is that you have less time for runs and sags, okay? So you spray it on there and boy, it pretty much starts setting up quick and, and holds its, its own. Um, if you go with a, what I'm gonna do because I'm putting this line on here. So this is gonna be the red paint that's gonna come down to right here. I'm gonna go along and make sure I got this pressed out really nice and tight, right all nice along that edge before I paint it, pull all this off. And I'll take some plastic and I'll bring the plastic up to here, take masking tape and join 
It was nice by using a half inch piece here. You got a lot of room, so I'll just bring the plastic up here, cut it to shape, then put a piece of uh, masking tape, wide masking tape over that joint. And that way we have plastic all, all underneath protecting the rest of the, the plane here from overspray. And I'll tell you what, if you use red, you can see red, and this is from a couple airplanes ago, that red absolutely does not remove from anything. These cups and stuff, even though you got paint thinner and everything on them, they, the red will not come off. So be sure you cover everything up. I got my exhaust filter over here. Uh, but in any case, I'm gonna come back and so again, we're gonna butt these colors. So the next color is gonna come up and butt it, okay? And you know, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. And the old paint, the DUHS paint, PPG, which Cub Crafters used to use, but we ran out, was a, was a lot better at, um, sticking to itself so in other words if you if you had a little paint you could have this paint line to here that you could actually come back and move the paint up over a little bit on their over on their overlap line you know if you wanted to and it would stick good but i'm gonna tell you what if you're painting over this paint this fd this uh, fdgh if you're say let's say for example i did paint this whole thing and i've done it before for a light cheap paint so i take a white and just paint it all the way down then come back with a color Okay, so you were gonna put blue or red down here on top of the white, so this is all white. If you did that, you have to come back with this FDGH, this new paint, and you have to sand, and I mean sand, not just scotch brought it and make it look pretty. You try to take a sander and really scuff that paint up good for it to stick. This paint does not wanna to stick to itself. It, it wants to come peel loose, so you have to make sure. So even if you're up next to the edge of some tape, you have to really get in there and sand it good or it won't stick. I'm just telling you, that's the negative to this paint. The positive of this paint is it dries very fast and very hard. You can come back the next day and, and, and tape right over it and go ahead and paint your next uh, paint line. So still to get back to the point I was making is that since I'm going to butt these, I'm gonna butt these completely together. So I'm gonna paint red right down to the edge, edge of this blue line. And as, when I paint it, as soon as I get through spraying this red, I mean, immediately after the second coat and I'm done, I'm gonna paint one coat and then pretty much uh, you want it tacky so that not much of the paint is coming off on your finger or your gloved hand if you start touching it. So that's tacky and it'll be about 15 or 20 minutes is all at 70 degrees. So pretty much almost by the time I get through spraying the first coat, it won't be long before I'll go back to the first part and start spraying the second coat. So I'll spray two, two coats on it. As soon as I finish that second coat, just immediately, I'm gonna come back and carefully pull off this tape, okay? So I'm gonna pull it off. And what that does, when I pull it off, is that tape, that paint will continue to flow just a bit. So instead of having a real hard, sharp edge right here, then what they'll do is let that paint just kind of smooth out and flatten just a little bit. It's not gonna run down across here. It's just gonna let it flatten a little bit so you don't have quite that stiff, hard edge. And it's not a big deal. You just be careful, just peel it back, you know, away from the paint. It's still nice and wet. And, uh, and that makes you a nicer edge. And then I'll come back uh, tomorrow the next day and they'll do the reverse. So this will then be red. So I'll come back and put the tape on this side. I'll just actually just follow my paint line with this blue tape, always making sure I'm covered. So I'm, either, so I'm seeing the edge of that red. I just take my time and go down through there and put it right on the edge. And it's amazing when you do that and then spray, paint that smoke color up through there, then when you get done, that edge will be, it'll be almost perfect without a, a hump. And since this isn't a base coat clear coat where we're putting a clear coat over all of our joints where you could sand the joints and then clear coat it and be perfectly smooth, this single stage paint is just a one application. So when you put paint over a paint, it actually has a little bit of an, of an edge, probably about as much as like a piece of vinyl that you'd use for this trim. So almost like when you stick vinyl on, you can go to the edge and kind of feel the edge of it. The same thing will happen to paint. So, but by peeling that, peeling that off, it lets it soften that edge. And then the, then that way you go right up to it. And I do the same thing when I spray the other side back on it, I peel that back off. And so you got a real soft edge on both sides right there. And uh, it just makes it, you know, a little bit nicer. So then that gives you your, your paint transition. Then all you have to do is like I say, is put your uh, stripe back on there. Then the red, then it'll be a red stripe down here too. That you see will go over the dark. You later right that and you just 
follow it and uh, and that's pretty much it i guess so anyway i just thought i'd kind of go over that i know it was kind of hard to figure out the first time and i'm not saying that's the this is the only way or the best way it's just the way i found that that does work and i got a really good vinyl guy over here locally and uh he's really I, I went in there and actually helped him apply some of this stuff to some pretty intricate stuff that he did and saw how to apply stripes and stuff and he kind of helped me uh show me how to do kind of do some of this stuff so any case hope it helps